Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. stint in the VR world dates back to the launch of the Nintendo Virtual Boy in 1995, and he has been passionate about gaming ever since. He is the co-founder and CEO of the Net VR. Please welcome Kyle Duran. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with Kyle Duran. How are we doing? Doing great, doing great. I'm, I'm excited. I'm really stoked, dude. I was looking at this website, The Net VR. Uh, really, really cool stuff. We actually met um, at the Oregon Entrepreneur Network event. Uh, but before we get into that, Kyle, give him a little background. Who is Kyle? Uh, so who is Kyle? I am I, I'm a Oregonian, period. That's, that's, <laughs> that is who I am. Uh, born, raised here, grew up here. Um, went to the Beaverton side, the west side of Portland, uh, have had a wonderful time uh, in the Pacific Northwest. I've moved around a lot. A lot of my family has actually moved out of Oregon just due to the recent climate <laughs> of, of, of everything. And I have stayed. Uh, I love it here. I've tried other areas. I am a warm weather person. I don't know why I still stay here in the Pacific <laughs> Northwest. I mean, I think it's 32 degrees out right now or close to. And yeah, um, that's me. Nice. So let's, let's, uh, what is the NVR? Give us folks a little bit about what it is and how you created it. So the NetVR is a platform. It's a social platform. Uh, it's a new way to socialize basically in the 3D environment. Um, we created a first product. Uh, which is the net VR theater. And it kind of um, cashes in on a niche, a very niche market um, in the live content creation space. So uh, Twitch is our number one uh, first application that we're kind of attaching ourselves to. Uh, someone goes live um, on Twitch and we provide a 3D space for all of the viewers and all of the uh, entertainers to engage uh, on a different level, um, directly with themselves more than just also with the content creator. So then it, it kind of adds this space. It's almost like creating like a, uh, concert type atmosphere where the content creator is still up, they're doing their content, but now you can have maybe a little sidebar conversation with, you know, your friend, like you would do in like a concert. Interesting. So I kind of envision it similar to like the old, um, Nintendo Wii, Right. And yes. that's, that's really cool. So you can actually also as, as an attendee. So for example, your avatar, uh, as a guest, you're not the curator. So you're in the audience. Could your avatar also have conversations with other avatars that are in attendance, kind of like engage with other, other attendees. Yes. Exactly. E exactly. Exactly. And now you, now you can kind of like, you know, like in, inside of, so specifically to our, our little niche product here, most people it's, it's a chat wall and the chat wall just kind of goes off and, and people, now you can actually associate, you know, you have a reference. You can say, Hey, it's that avatar over there. That's talking. I want to go, I want to go talk with that individual specifically, maybe more in a little more private conversation, but you meet in this public setting of, you know, Hey, the content creator can bring 9,000 people together. How can I then talk to one individual on, on a private one-to-one -one conversation um, and then go from there? You, you mentioned product. How would you define the product that you're, you're selling? The product that we're selling is it's very niche. So it's, it's a lot of different things. So like we're not necessarily a video game. We're not a fully a social platform. We're not like a metaverse type like sales experience. We're kind of all three blended together. So it kind of puts us in a very per specific predicament of trying to be able to, who do we pitch to? Who do we find funding from? Because we don't really quite fit in any of these boxes specifically. Yeah. Um, you know, we apply to a lot of like, uh places and they're like 
what are what you're not a video game get out of here like you're you're not a, you're not headsets you're, you're not virtual reality you're not quite metaverse you're not blockchain because you don't have any kind of blockchain aspects so it, it's it's kind of funny where our product fits um because it kind of pulls in a lot of the specific aspects um and then really focuses in on making conscious connections yeah. i think is directly where our product um really lands is is being able to say hey you and i are making a conscious connection right now on zoom uh we can see each other right now <laughs> maybe you know vocally we're able to connect um but then as as the new states and as computers get better and better and better you know 3d avatars and stuff are are, are coming to life yeah and i i you know i follow individuals on twitch often as well and it's kind of interesting because i remember in particular one gentleman i was watching him create a keyboard right? One of my former guests building out a keyboard. And I noticed there's other individuals on this uh, link, but we're only able to chat. And you kind of feel like you're missing something a little bit because it's Twitch and very interactive. And so you kind of just felt like you're missing a little piece, you know? Now, one of the things you also mentioned was financing. You're having difficulty. How, what has been your experience with the financing for this venture? So, I mean, we started in 2019 uh, is when we started. This was pre-COVID, pre-metaverse, pre, <laughs> pre any kind of like stuff like that. And we, we sat down and we were like, hey, we're going to build a mall. We're going to build a shopping mall. Who hasn't built a shopping mall before? Um, <clears throat> and so that's where we started. And once we got there, um, we started noticing, hey, that, that's not, that stuff's not quite going to work. Um, so let's get in and let's, let's, let's focus on and see what, what we can do. Uh, and then we came to our current conclusion of, of where we're at in building a, building a, a platform that, that focuses in on live content creators. Um, sorry, and to get back to your question, funding. Funding was, has been a big challenge. Just with that whole kind of grasp or that whole um, segment, pre-2020, in, in the Portland Pacific area, there, there really wasn't, we didn't know who to go to like, Hey, you want to do a startup? Where do you go? Um, you know, OEN was kind of like falling out. TAO was falling out. Everyone was kind of <laughs> going by the wayside. Um, I mean, even in, in SSF and LA and not that, you know, the hubs for, uh, getting our product up and going kind of all went away. Um, right at the time when we really started, Hey, this is the product that we want to go and get funding for yeah. right after that all kind of crashed and fell apart. So I got to ask, you mentioned, do you, were you trying to build a, a physical brick and mortar mall and then you decided to pivot to virtual or were you trying to build a virtual mall? We were trying to build a virtual mall originally. So that was kind of the idea. And we had a little bit of, uh, you know, our own funding to, to, to get it started. Um, we realized that we wouldn't be able to break that off ourselves like just with the small team that we had of three individuals only one of us was a real coder uh we wouldn't be able to accomplish that so it wasn't a feasible idea to build a mall ourselves so we kind of scaled the product the project back to something that we could complete ourselves and let's let's talk about the vision a little bit because you, you mentioned you you have a product right and you have a vision but more importantly it how did you get to the vision because you're you're such an innovator right now because you're again this is before metaverse this is before the pandemic and so folks if you're listening you know you think about what the world was like before the pandemic we didn't have metaverse we weren't talking about web3 we weren't crypto was around sure but how did you kind of get from the vision to the product so what's interesting is the product actually drove the vision <laughs> which is kind of like backward maybe the, the vision kind of came around um with the entire vision, it's, it's, we focus in on time, space, and matter. So it's, we focus in on the definition of reality. And then when we focus in on the definition of reality, it kind of gave us this aha moment of what's missing in these metaverse projects. So there's the central land out right now. There's all these, you know, crypto projects that have the 3d space. Um, but they, they're missing something. And every single time you go into them, you're like, what is it missing? Um, you look at the projects that are successful, and, we, and we've done studies on the projects that are successful. So VR chat, uh, Second Life was pretty successful. Um, they all incorporated an element of live connection. Um, and so we focused in on, okay, what is live? Oh, that, that, that's time related. So what is it about time relation that makes 
these atmospheres so much more engaging and, and pulls people in. Um, so that gave us that aspect of time. Then we started looking at reality. What's the definition? Oh, it's time bound. Oh, okay. Well, that all makes sense. So what's the best time to communicate? Um, it's live. It's, it's right now. You want to be able to be not, not in the future. Like, I don't want to write an email where you read it in the future. I want to write an email where you talk to me right now. Yeah. Like if you've yeah. ever been or sent somebody a text message, you're like, oh my God, why aren't they responding to me right now? You start getting frustrated, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so, so we focused in on, on time as, as an aspect of reality. And so that's live. So then we went out, we found, oh, there's live content creators that are live. So how do we get them into the 3D space? Um, you know, there's not very many live content creators out there. Or, excuse, sorry, there's not, there's not many, how do I say this? There's not many people broadcasting live content. Gotcha. If that makes sense. That like makes a sense. lot of, there's a lot of YouTube videos. Yep. There's a lot of past content um, that's out there that we consume in the VR space, but not a lot of it's, it's pre predominantly live. Yeah. Um, so then we went back down to, Hey, space, you know, everyone's on YouTube. We're all on our phones, on the endless chats, right. on the endless chat. Well, why not bring in a, a, a 3d space? Uh, technology is getting there. Um, you know, zoom still 2d, but to bring in the 3d space, like it's coming. It's, it's as graphics get better and computers get faster. Our phones now have the ability to do um, 3D games. Uh, so, so that was kind of the space, that, that was the space aspect of it. And then uh, it was matter. And this, was, this is where we're actually um, hopefully coming out soon with our uh, no VR VR. So it's hashtag no VR VR. So it's virtual, it's reinventing virtual reality in the wake of the metaverse. And it kind of goes through and it describes time, space, and matter. And then the matter is where the matter doesn't matter because people don't care about it, but yeah. it's really the meat and potatoes of understanding that there's a reality and then there's a conscious level. And the conscious level is not what we're about. We're about creating a virtual reality. Um, but it starts to make comparisons. And when we started doing studies and understanding, a lot of things started to make sense where like people in virtual reality have phantom limb syndrome where they actually feel like their arm is actually being you know hit with a hammer but it's not actually being hit with a hammer but because their eyes sense it um so oh, it gets wow. to this like conscious level that that we're not about but we're really focusing in on in making virtual virtual reality a little bit more real <laughs> yeah and you know i gotta say listening to this product one area i think you might see yourself that you probably haven't thought about yet is healthcare. And the reason I say this is because conferences, healthcare conferences with the pandemic, it's taught us getting a lot of providers in a room with no mask on isn't probably the best idea in the world. Uh, and so we're starting to do these hybrid models, right? We're doing virtual slash uh, in person. However, the cost of the AV for virtual is, is pretty exponential sometimes. And it still has like a, we're, you're missing a piece right? You're missing that interaction, that engagement to your point. And I really, really like this um, opportunity to be able to engage with individuals that are virtually in that space, right? But then their 3D feel as well. Uh, yes. So it's funny that you say that. So I actually have a family member that's in the healthcare space and uh, they've said that, that same kind of thing. Like I've done these kind of online virtual workshops, but they just don't, they're missing something. They're, they're, they just don't, quite work and so what we've noticed is there's there's a big limitation to the amount of people that can connect to one server and one individual server um and so this is where the the content creators can kind of build until we're able to get um better networking protocols that allow more people to get into and it, so my background's in gaming and so i understand a lot of this this yeah. stuff like so it's called mmo mass multiplayer online where everybody connects and you're, you're really limited to about 100 real live connections. Um, anything more than that, and you start to, the, the product starts to break down. Okay. Um, Technology is getting there very rapidly. I think a lot of the uh, crypto guys are pushing, you know, for mass concerts with, you know, 40,000 people. But you want to see the 40,000 people, you know, you get that attraction where really, if you have more than 100 people, the space is going to collapse and break. So there's still a little bit of technology that needs to be um, to come around to really get to those uh, full atmospheres. Um, but yeah, we, we have ideas on how to try and get to 
conferencing for sure, yeah. for sure, specifically in healthcare. And I'd say for those folks that listen, I think a great example of what you described would be like Call of Duty. Yes. Right. Yes. It's getting out there kind of thing. Yeah. Now, is this your first business? This is my first. Uh, yes. This is the first business that I've tried to start. Yes. What has been hard about this starting this first business? Uh, funding has really been our biggest challenge. I mean, we were able to find developers. We're still able to find developers somehow. <laughs> a lot of them are starting to <laughs> become easier and easier to find um, with the, the layoffs from the big guys. But uh, funding has been the biggest challenge, uh, p- specifically in the Pacific Northwest. Um, advisors and stuff have, have told us, leave, go to San Francisco. Um, you know, you read online, geography isn't really a thing with the, with the um, the, the new metaverse and everything going digital, I, I tend to disagree. I think a lot of investors are pulling back because they want, when they invest in a company, they want that company to be local. Um, and, and that goes back to space. If you look at it and it goes back to one of our definitions, like you, people, if I'm, I want that person to be close to me. Right. Um, and I don't want them in the virtual space. If you look at kind of like, we also look at time bound, like your age um, is, is another big factor. If, if your age is a little bit older, a little bit, you know, able to invest, you're not going to trust the virtual space at all. Um, If you're younger, you're going to trust the virtual space more than you're going to trust the real reality space. Um, So our product's kind of like stuck right in between these two generations where, hey, we need the money from the the elders. (laughs) We can't build it for the the youngins. Um, And how do we get that flow? But to go back to it, funding in the Pacific Northwest, you know, we just don't have it here. You know, our biggest funds around here are considered micro funds to Seattle. Um, and then Seattle's biggest funds are micro funds to SSF. Yep. Um, we, we can't get traditional financing because we're our, our products in the digital space. Um, but if you look at it, you know, an entire city SSF has been able to expand exponentially because they are primarily a digital city. Uh, you know, all the applications come out of there. They're all SaaS platforms, which technically we are a software as a service. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Good point. Now what, Has there been anything easy about this uh, entrepreneurship venture that you're going down? Um, start. So I had my own kind of funds and what's been easy is (laughs) it might not be easy for everybody, but just, just, just do it. (laughs) Kind of the the Pacific Northwest. Um, you can, you can just do it. And how do you do it? Uh, that's, that's a good question. The internet is right there. (laughs) Yeah. Start Googling it. If you got a question, um, you got, you got to be a problem solver if you're an entrepreneur uh, and the internet is right there. So yep. you got a problem, Google it. Very true. <laughs> so that, that's been the easy part. <laughs> you know, one of the things, it's kind of interesting because you, you mentioned at the very beginning, you are targeting a very niched uh, market. How do you market to that niche market? We go to them. So we, we just, we pop into their live streams and we, we show them their product. We get into their discord and we, we send them a snippet of, you know, what we're doing where we ask them if we can boot a theater. Um, the feedback's awesome. It, it's so awesome. When you see something, you're like, Oh my goodness. Is that really, is that my theater? Like it's, it's really cool to see customers be able to do that or, you know, get their reactions, their live reactions. And, and the key thing is it's a live reaction. It's yeah. not, you notice the difference between like reactions on like TV or something like that, where it's staged and you know, it's staged. Like a lot of TikTok videos, like they lose that time where it's, you want to see the live reaction. Um, Like, Ooh, that wasn't really cool. You know, it's all in their face. You can see it. You can, you know, with live content creators, a lot of them stream, they're themselves. Yep, and so yeah. there's so much interaction that you get and miss, but on live streams, you get to see those again. You know, that's a good point. I was thinking about when you're mentioning the, the, inter, the reactions, I'm thinking about how many times, you know, if you're a game of Thrones fans like myself, how many times do you look at YouTube during that red wedding scene and just look at fan reactions during that, right? I'm like, Oh man, this is content gold right here. I'm love, I love seeing how they are reacting, you know, now how, so you're, you're got your niche product, right? You're starting to market to it. Where do you, where do you envision the brand in the next five years? Um, I mean, we want to be, I mean, we want, we, we say we're competing with Facebook. I mean, obviously, obviously that's not, that's not, uh, maybe reasonable or rational. Um, but it could be, uh, 
having a platform, having a social platform can go from, you know, zero to hero overnight. We've seen a lot of them do that. Clubhouse is an example of it that's gone yep. zero to hero. Roblox is another example um, that's been able to kind of do that in the younger generations that hasn't spanned multiple generations. Uh, one of the key things we focused in on of why, why we started with a theater was because a theater is for all ages, for all types of content, for all kinds of anything. Like you can, you can get all the way bad, you can get all the way good, you can get all the way kid, you can get all the way adult. Smart. It's, 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 that's why we started in a theater. Um, if you look at most things we kind of generalize about metaverse, we see through movies, right? So Matrix is, is a great example of a movie, uh, Ready Player One. Um, we see those movies and we see, you know, they're, they're, they're usually ahead of the future. Um, so, and we're just trying to get there. Nice. And, and so how does, how does this work? So for an individual that was interested, maybe there's a Twitch player out there that's interested. How does it work? How do they kind of get involved with uh, this product? So Twitch content creators right now, uh, they can go to Steam. So most gamers are, are very familiar with Steam. Uh, they can download uh, the NetVR theater and they can host a theater. So we have a YouTube page. There's a, a how to host a theater on the YouTube page. Um, and then that's all you got to do as a content creator. That's it for now. Um, we're obviously working to get that better uh, in the future. Uh, so it's just a nice uh, go to a website, one easy click, you're on and it's good to go. Uh, but that's, that's where we're at right now is we're primarily on steam. And, and just to, is there any cost associated with it or is this free to the creators? Nope. Everything's free to use right now. Um, so this is, we currently basically have our MVP. Our MVP is kind of maxed out, uh, at, at where we can use, so we can, we can get you a hosted theater. Um, but the rest of the monetization and stuff. So for viewers to be able to purchase your digital assets, uh, that we set up for you in the background. Uh, that's still stuff that needs to be built out. And that, that is why we're out seeking funding Nice. or no. coders. If there's coders out there that want to work for free, come hit me up. There you go. And then, like you said, there's several coders. I'm sure that are probably looking for some, some, some availabilities. Now, what would you say, you know, this is your first, um, first small business. What would you say, what some advice would you give to an aspiring entrepreneur that you've learned throughout this process? Um, so probably one of the biggest for me was getting into a, a, you don't need to get into like an accelerator, like a tech starts or one of those. I mean, that would be awesome if you can apply. Um, but it, honestly, locally here, we, I got a hold of, uh, the Thai network specifically if, if you're in the Pacific Northwest, um, Carrie over at, uh, Thai Portland did a really good job. Uh, it was a quick eight week. You could do it after hours so you can keep, you know, maintain your day job, uh, and that program was really, really good. Um, I, it was $500. We were able to get sponsored. Um, but that, that, that process, it was super quick, super high level. It kind of showed determination for investors. A lot of people don't really know what it takes to be an entre entrepreneur and, and how hard it is. Um, but that was a really good, quick, crash course on what it takes to become an entrepreneur. And, and by the end of it, you'll know whether you have the capability of doing it for $500. If I had known, yeah. <laughs> I, if I could have spent that money before I would have spent that money before. Um, cause it, it gets you through your, your revision one, two, and three at a relatively cheap cost. I mean, there's, there's funds out there, you know, there's, you say, hey, I need money. Let me go to this guy. He's going to promise me $1,000. I'm going to pay this guy $1,000. He's going to introduce me to all these people in the network. That's not how it works. Yeah. <laughs> but they're out there. There's sharks out there all the time. Really, it's about getting your content together um, in a way that makes sense for investors, but also makes sense for your business. And I think that program did a very good job of making sure, hey, here's your one pitch. Is what you're doing even a viable problem? Does it even solve a proper problem? Does it have legs? And, and that's what that program did. And I mean, I would recommend that one. Nice. Now you want you, you kind of organically been stating this. Let's talk about the importance of networking because you're talking about getting out in front of the people talking about it. You're working with all these other um, business accelerator programs. How important has networking been for you? Uh, I'm so I'll, I'll first, off, first off say I'm a terrible network. I'm an introvert. I hate networking. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very uncomfortable for me to, to go out and network. Uh, however, it's crucial. 
if, if you want to be a business and you want to be a founder, it, it's crucial because you can't do it alone. And you'll hear it over and over and over again. You can't do it alone. And if you can't network, you might have the, the, the best idea ever. But if you can't network, then you're not going to be able to get your product out there because you can't do it all alone. Maybe there is. Maybe there is like a really one-off case or scenario that you can do it on your own. But that's that's going to be most likely no. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, that's how we connected, right? Through networking. We met at the Oregon Entrepreneur Network event uh, award ceremony. And I was like, hey, you have a small business. I would love to hear more about you. Got your card. In fact, the reason we connected is because I was actually talking with a CPA who knew you. It wasn't even, we didn't even connect. So it's again, the importance of networking, you know, it's, you just see this, you, and to your point, there are sharks out there everywhere to kind of, and, and there's not in a bad way. I mean, like if a supporting way, um, you know, I, I had a one episode where we're talking about there truly are individuals that you have not ever met before that truly want you to support you. Right. Uh, there's an old saying, the biggest, your biggest hater is someone you already know. And your biggest supporter is someone you never met kind of thing. And it's true. Uh, there's a lot of individuals that are out there that really, truly want to support you. But at the end of the day, if they don't know about your product and they don't know you, um, because investors sometimes are not just investing in the company, but they're investing in the entrepreneur. Right. 100%. Now I would just say like on the flip side of it. Uh, so for, for me, I, I'm not very good at, at, at speaking with other people or, or first engaging, but just showing up in the space. And that's honestly how I got to your point. So from my side of it, I was talking with the CPA who knows nothing or cares nothing about the NetVR, is not an investor, yep. has absolutely no clue. He came running back to like, I, I, I told him about our product. And he's like, wow, that's, that's actually really, really good. And then he, he's like, hey, have, you know who Gabe is? And I'm like, well, I've heard his name before and he's done, you know, he's got a podcast, but I haven't been able to connect with him. But then immediately we were able to connect there because we were in that same space. Yep. Now we actually know each other. You can put face. Yep. I can put a business card in your hand, a real reality business card in your hand, which is that's, that's, that is networking right yep, there. And I, we didn't really talk there we, at the OEN event. We said maybe two, three, four words to each other. It's true. It, and we're all like, I was like, all right, back on the networking train. <laughs> Let's see who else we got? Who else yep, are we meeting? Yep. So for the folks at home, they want to learn more about this. Where can they find uh, information on social media or the website? You've already mentioned some of the other locations. Where can they get some more information? Uh, the easiest way to contact me is LinkedIn. I post heavily on LinkedIn uh, about the no VR, VR concept. Um, so if you ever want to understand kind of our concepts of, of what, what we're doing or what we're grasping when, when we say we're reinventing virtual reality in the wake of the metaverse, um, you can follow me there. Uh, DM me on there. I'm, I'm always on there. Or my email is pretty easy. Kyle at the net um, Same thing as our website, the net uh, Try and make it as simple as possible to, to contact or reach us. Um, that or I'm at basically any of the Pacific Northwest networking events. I try and make it to any of them. Um, I guess if anybody's listening and they have an event that they have, please, please invite me. I will show up. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love it. Yeah. In fact, you know, similar, if you guys have events out there, please, please let me know. In fact, this is an, another reason why you listeners should subscribe to the Shades of Entrepreneurship newsletter, because we will have the net VR information on the newsletter the week before the episode airs, the week the episode airs, and the week after. We'll also have a transcription of this episode on the website at theshadesofe.com. So you can go ahead and read it if, if you're, if listening is not your cup of tea, or if you have some uh, abilities that prohibit that, we got it actually go ahead and transcribed it for you as well. Kyle, thank you so much. I'm, I'm really stoked. I haven't, again, I know a few Twitch people, so I'm going to kind of forward this on to them because I th really think this is a really smart idea and, and truly uh, in the healthcare space, I really believe that this is a, probably an opportunity uh, as well uh, because providers are, and, and nurses, you know, the healthcare, they're missing the engagement. They have the burnout. And so traveling across the country for required education uh, is becoming a little difficult. Yeah, that, yeah, I, 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 our product can help and solve that. It, it can. Um, we just got to make it as easy as possible for those individuals. So, I agree. Awesome. Kyle, thank you again so much for those listening. Please follow me at the shades of E on the social sites, or you can visit the at the shades of E.com. Thank you and have a great night. Thank you for tuning in to the shades of entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.